52 kilograms. Oh, 315. Sorry to hear some cracking. This is my coffee press. It makes little espressos for me when I'm in the garage. In all seriousness, this is my shop press. As you can see at the top, I bought the one with the dial. I wanted to do some testing using the shop press. I wanted to see at what force do certain components fail. And with that gauge, I thought I'd be able to see when a part of mine fail, whether under compression or doing shear testing, there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Now unfortunately, the last part that I tested, it broke under one ton of force. So I was not able to get the data that I was looking for. So I decided to build a load sensor with a digital readout to display what kind of force my shop press was outputting. The components you need for this build are a load cell. In my case, I'm using a S-type precision load cell rated for two tons, a load cell amplifier, I'm using the HX711 breakout board and some sort of microcontroller. I chose the Arduino Nano for its small form factor. So let's get started and solder this. Now it's time to plug everything together. Connect the wires ground to ground, DT to D2, SCK to D3, and VCC to 5 volts. Here I have the Arduino connected to my laptop via mini USB, and the load cell is connected to the Arduino through the amplifier. I've downloaded the Arduino HX711 library and recycled one of the examples for my build. Download and run the code with the serial plotter. It should show a line traveling along the x-axis indicating zero force applied. Once you place an object on your load cell or apply a force to it, you'll see the line spike to indicate the force being applied. Now I want this device to function without a laptop, which means we're going to need to use some sort of display. I'm using this 16x2 LCD display. I'm using one with a soldered on I2C controller, which cuts out a lot of the work and lets me control the screen with these four pins. Let's go over the wiring. For the display, I connected the voltage pin to 5 volts, ground to ground, SDA to A4 and SCL to A5. I'm using this breadboard to securely mount the Arduino as well as the load cell and it lets me easily divide the single 5 volt output from my Arduino Nano for both of the breakout boards. Real quick, here's a wiring diagram of all the wires just in case I was not clear. If you decide to use different wires on your Arduino or even a different microcontroller, just change the pins in the code. So now if you pay attention to the screen, every time you start it up, it starts off by saying let's crush something and it holds there until you start applying some sort of force. And then as soon as you apply a force, it shows you maximum load in kilogram and then it shows the numerical value down there and it holds the maximum value. You could also code it so that it shows you the exact value at the time the load is applied but then when the load comes off, the number is no longer there. The purpose of this is to store the maximum value of the force applied before failure. 
Now I have this device calibrated to go up by increments of 1 kilogram. While this device has the capacity to give even more resolution, that much resolution is irrelevant to my use. But you could certainly change it to go up in increments of 1 gram. Or output in pounds. Or even a weird unit like stones. Just calibrate it to your preferred system of measurements. Now to make it look legit, let's put it in a casing. I printed this box out of pet G. It has standoffs to screw our LCD display into. And the breadboard will just use the double sided tape that came with it to stick it in. And it has two holes to input the power as well as the signal from the load cell. So now that everything is in its place, it's time to close it up. I printed this backing plate out of PLA just to add some color. Added this indentation to stiffen up the plate and the box. Always keep a pile of your smallest screws in one container. Here's a little trick. Get an empty box, think of the size and quantity of screws you want, and say the words, Dearest Blondie, bless me with hardware. And then shake it vigorously, and voila! the screws will magically jump into your box. In all seriousness, make sure all of your hardware uses the same bit. It'll save you a lot of frustration later. I printed this bottom part separate to make the overall print time faster. This way the holes don't need any support. I included this wedge to align the parts easily. I'm using this medium thickness cyanoacrylate. It worked quite well for me. Let's put our build to work. We can power everything using a phone charger with a USB out. I don't have the samples I intend to use this build on, but we can crush some wood for demonstration purposes. The load cell just has to go between the piston and the piece we're applying the force to. We're gonna start pumping up the shop press and collect some data at the top. So I've started pumping it up. Right now it's recording 53 kilograms of force. Let's see how what force this wood breaks at. We're all the way up to 100, 200, 252 kilograms. Oh, 315. Start to hear some cracking. There you go, 362. At 362 kilograms, that piece of wood failed. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more.